All right, welcome back, everyone. Sorry, we had some slight technical difficulties there. Getting the stream up, we are back. We have the bands in, and we have the opening pick from the United States, T1G. It's double time, too. It's an interesting starting point. I don't know that I would expect this to be a map that anyone would be, like, the most comfortable with. So this week's DT2 is a very, very old map. Um, I want to say it's from 2009. Uh, very uncomfortable, kind of has that older style of uncomfortable um, stream patterns and some kind of hex grid mapping. This is a throwback, and this is, I, you know, I suppose if you're the USA, you've got some players who really enjoy the older maps, right? You've got Bashi coming in, you've got Fancy Lad Tommy, who are really good at these types of things. Um, so I think a pr uh, like a reasonable, if you're looking at it holistically, surprising to see this as a first pick regardless, but a reasonable pick in the United States' favor. I definitely think this is going to be one that they'll be pretty confident in winning. Well, here we go. Opening pick of the match, United States on to double time two. It's Bashi Man, Utami, Fancy Lad, and Rectagon against Mr. Potato, TYTY, Sip, and Painted Koala for Israel, an early miss for Mr. Potato. It's interesting because TYTY did, I don't think he was present for qualifiers. He didn't play a single map, so I'm guessing he just, like, was not there. Uh, Mr. Potato, Painted Koala, and Sip were three of the main performers in the qualifiers for Israel, although, uh, unfortunately, Potato and Painted Koala both breaking early on. Uh, they get joined by Fancy Lad. But USA just going to be out to an early lead on this and going to see how long they can hold on to a few FCs in the early goings. Yeah, a couple very early breaks there from Israel, but that trade from the United States, that double miss from Bashi and Fancy Lad will allow Israel a chance back into it in the early going. A quarter of the way through, and they actually have a chance to flip the score lead. Yeah, it's TYTY and Sip against Utami and Rectigon, but Mr. Potato and Pinnacuala both do have longer combos than their opposite numbers. Rectigon, Rectigon with Rectigon. the next break. Wow. Israel uh, out in front. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> we've seen this with the United States before against a 30-second seed. But Mr. Potato is going to find a miss from Israel, so that'll be putting the brakes on the train. This TYTY also goes down for Israel, so that's big. Only Sip and Painted Koala remaining for them. Yeah, that lead went up to 100k, though. The the score gap was going towards the Israel side, you know, in a decent manner. Kind of coming through this middle third of the map, the scores start to really get bigger and bigger. There goes Fancy Lad. It's got to be Sip holding, though, that FC matching Utami is Painted Koala. Koala. Oh. And that's right at halfway. Yeah, you don't want to miss. That's a brutal miss. Yeah, close to the last third of the map here. And it is, as you said, Utami versus Sip. But the backing combo is on the favor of the United States. But that double miss is going to change things for Bashi Man and Rectagon. Israel now have a chance to hold a gap here. It looks like it's about 50k. Yeah, there's really no backing combo for Utami on the United States side. Mr. Potato and TYTY oh, both holding. Oh my goodness. Israel! Not... Everybody with the 5-0 picks in Pickums is about to be doomed on the first map of the match. And Utami is being traded by Sip in Israel. We're going to do it. Oh, Sip goes down. No FC. But is there enough time for Utami? I don't know. Coming into the closing sections of the map. Can they steal it back from the Israelites? They cannot, oh, Israel. Oh, Break point. Oh, one nothing. Pickums destroyed oh my god all right if you saw that coming you're a prophet i guess united states drops their first pick as the one seed versus the 32nd seed israel and mr this potato states oh. in the chat we got a point that's all we need <sighs> Look at that mindset. <laughs> uh, I mean, Israel has already won. You in come their in, mind. you come into this match and you just you, you're just you know hoping for the best because obviously you're super you're the biggest underdogs possible if you're Israel. I wow. And no mod one. I mean, hey, that's not a bad pick from Israel. Let's go coin flipping. Okay, Mr. Sunshine will be the opening pick from Israel. They lead 1-0, a chance to take a 2-0 lead against the number one seed, T1G. It's, if you're going to pick anything to try to take the 2-0 lead here, it's going to be Nomad 1. Like you said, it's it's always kind of mm. a coin flippy type of map. We talk about the Nomad 1 slot being a little bit RNG because it's basically just who has better consistent aim on that given performance on that given map. And it's really easy to just one miss in the middle and all of a sudden you're you know, 950k is 600k, and that can be the make or break. You know, this is not the first time the United States being the number one seed has dropped a point to a 32nd seed. They did so against Turkey, but the thing to note about that is Turkey 
won their own pick when they took a point against the United States. This was a break point. USA, I mean, they lost the one point against Turkey a couple years ago. They lost a point against Malaysia a couple years ago in first round. Um, you know, after they won 5-0 in the opening match last year, I thought maybe they'd ironed out the kinks, whatever it was that was causing them to lose picks to the 30-second seeds, because they've been the number one seed every year there's been qualifiers. So whatever it was that was causing them to drop seeds to the points to these 32 seeds, I thought, you know, maybe they've sorted it out. But evidently, that was just not the case. And Israel, plucky underdogs make the most of some poor performances from the United States by their standards. And really just held combos when they needed to. That was the key difference maker there. The U.S. just were not the more consistent team on that pick. But now Israel with a chance to open things up here and make a little history. It's Nomad 1 for Israel. It's Mr. Potato, TYTY, Sip, and Painted Koala. No substitutions against Utami, Monko 2K, Takedo, and Rectagon for the United States, just two substitutions there. Yeah, this is the aim consistency roster for the USA. I I think you would typically see Deca 10 in for this, but of course with him not being here, Monka was a more than worthy replacement, very good aim player. Um, over on the Israel side, it's the roster they ran on Nomad 1 in qualifiers with SIP coming, or with, uh, excuse me, TYTY coming in to replace Galog, who was actually their top scorer in qualifiers in Nomad 1, which, is a little interesting to me, but we'll see how it goes for him. This is a little higher BPM than most Nomad 1s you'd see in an RO32, so we'll see how the players handle it. Shouldn't be too much trouble. An early miss from Mr. Potato is all that separates us right now. United States with a slight lead, but as we've seen from the previous map, an early miss does not mean anything if the misses come in midway. Yeah, and worth noting is that this is the longest map in the pool, 4 minutes and 20 seconds. Um, so there is a ton of time for things to swing back and forth. There are several sections of the map where you know your aim consistency really gets called into play. Obviously, there's a little bit of free combo just because there always will be in a song that fits in Nomad 1. But any of those multiple aim sections kind of in the key eye times are going to be places where anyone can miss just because that's what happens on these slots. Yeah, it's about a 30-40k lead here for the United States. Not a major deficit, but they hold it over a quarter of the way in. Sip is going to be finding a drop there, just a slight miss aim. And that is going to start to open things up a little bit more. That's the sort of place, like I was talking about, you get those slight increases in spacing in the jumps, and you just under-aim ever so slightly, and there you are, your combo's gone, and you're 600 combo behind all of a sudden, and the United States is able to make an 80k lead out of it like it's nothing. Yep. Now already approaching 100k, but still over two minutes, nearly three minutes remaining. It's quite a lengthy map. Yeah, looking at the accuracy, United States feeling pretty confident. You can tell they've only dropped a total of, I think, two 100s um, versus, you know, 98 on SIP, below 99 on TYTY. So it's going to help just a little bit more. Every bit counts when there's not a lot in the map. Halfway mark here, so we're going to pay attention for some misses here. They could be detrimental, but one thing to note is that Mr. Potato's miss was very early, so Israel are essentially rocking two and three quarter full combos here. Yeah, he's less than 100 combo behind the FCs, so like you said, really not the worst case scenario on that miss. It's the SIP miss that's the one that really does matter, and that T -Y -T -Y. miss from DYTY. And again, a break at the exact halfway mark especially on a Nomad 1, is extremely damaging. Yeah, because it's not likely that we're going to see any misses come out here unless it's in the key eye in the latter half. And now Israel are basically going to need the United States to fall apart here to lose this deficit. Still possible, but they will need to see something soon as the U.S. are still four-way. Yeah, I mean, any break can still swing this, but it really has to be quick. There's Tommy. Tommy. It's traded. traded. Like, yeah, but TYTY -T just oh. missed earlier, so it's not as bad. And Mungo's going to drop again. Oh Takedo drops. Wait a minute. Not the only one left. Here comes Israel. Wait, 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 wait. There's They're going to have to hold out. Yeah, There's a lot left. of time. Yeah. And this, so, is why, this is why Nomad 1 is that really volatile slot, because you can break just like that at the, at the two-thirds, three-quarter of the way mark with a huge lead, and all of a sudden it's come backable if your opponents are holding on to big combos or FCs, and you've got Painted Koala matching Rectigon plus Mr. Potato on that near full combo. And it's Sip's reporting. It's 200k, it's coming back slowly, but there should be enough time for Israel there, here. 
there just may be enough time. Taquito finding another miss. That's gonna speed things up a little bit. Now it is definitely doable. Taquito chain missing now. Rectagon is the only hope here for the Americans. Utami Amunko desperately trying to build some combo. Israel might be able to pull off another miracle, but TYTY misses. It's not even, though, no, he's not the important one, though. It's Pain and Koala on the FC, Mr. Potato on the near FC, Sip on a 1K combo. It's about to go over. It's gonna get it's close. Hit, dropping. Israel for the steal, for the 2 0 lead on the number one seed. Oh. They've got it. Israel, Sip drops. That's not the one that matters. Israel just needs to hold. And they have done the work. 2 0. Wait, no. It is. Now it is. 2 0. Oh by 15k to Israel the comeback I I I am I'm I'm speechless okay now for sure there's no way anyone's pick him for this match is it's, less intact yeah it's it's gone anybody it's, 100% it, gone. It, it's, it's done I don't even I mean this is why you pick Nomad 1 as a lower seed into a higher seed that is exactly. the reason that displayed everything about that sort of pick that makes it winnable for a lower seeded team to upset. Israel just held the combos longer and avoided those crucial late breaks. Rectagon had an SS and it didn't even matter. It didn't matter, yeah. Just didn't matter. And, you know, we say this almost every time we talk about uh, a huge seed disparity matchup, T1G, and that is the fact that if you're the lower seeded team, the early game, your first two picks are what matter the most. You have to convert something and get on the board to get some momentum. This is the dream scenario for Israel right here. They're up 2 nothing. US has the pick. I mean, I don't think anybody saw this situation coming from the start of the match. Absolutely not. I mean, your best case scenario, I think, if you're, if you're the low seed here, is winning your first pick and losing your opponent's first pick because they're probably the best picks that either team has. But mm -hmm. they got a break point and then won their own first pick. I don't remember the last time the United States dropped a break point to anyone until like the winner's final. It's just something that doesn't happen. And now they go into, honestly, USA picking free mod too, which is the speed free mod, which is not the worst thing in the world, I don't think, for Team Israel. Yeah, considering how they did on that opening round one double time pick, I don't think it's the worst thing in the world, but what the U.S. are probably banking on here is now they've got to switch something up, right? Th this has gotten serious. They're down 2-0 to the 32nd seed. They need to change something up, more mod flexibility to maybe change the rosters and get more players in. But what I kind of don't like about this, T1G, is that allows Israel to do the same. I... I don't know how to feel about anything in this match anymore. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, it's so it's like... hard to have a feeling about this match when the, it started off and just the script for this match, it, as expected, has been flipped completely the, on the, its head. The spreadsheets, the notes, the Google Docs, all worthless at this point. Everything we've been working on for this match, out the window. And here is the first substitution for Israel. Um, FXXYX. <laughs> uh, I, I want to say Foxy, but... <laughs> uh, yeah, he, so he was in for DT picks in the qualifiers. He came in for DT2 and DT3, which were the tapping heavy picks. So that is a logical substitution to have them make here. Mr. Potato Sip, again, you know, just kind of the, the lobby warriors staying in because they can play everything in this stage. Uh, I, you know, I am also looking at TYTY. Again, did not play in qualifiers. Team squeaks by and he plays the first two maps and they win both of them. And now he's in for the third as well. I just, I'm more concerned with how to pronounce that name. <laughs> uh, FXXYX, yeah, that does not roll off the tongue. Uh, I'm gonna uh, go with, I'm just gonna go with FX for now until we yeah. get. Yeah. But that's, uh, fine. that's all we can do. Israel's got some great names for casters. Sip, TYTY, <laughs> FX. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Potato, for bringing some semblance of normalcy to your team. Wow. USA on their own pick over modding to Oblivion. And that oh man, I don't know how to feel about anything anymore, man. Because this could backfire. I mean, you know, obviously the mod advantage. And if you're the US, you definitely want to over mod a little, right? You know, you want to play your skill gap some. But this is a little bold. Utami on the HDHR. Maybe they're just looking to make a statement and get some morale going back on their side. Because I think that is what they need more than anything right now. 
Yeah, I mean, it's it still feels so risky, though, to overmod, even on an early stage pool. Like, just your margin for error drops by so much when you have every... Mm. We, you know, you don't have that Nomad anchor player who you just know is going to put up an FC. But and on a map that, like this, where it's, you know, CS3, so the Hard Rock isn't, you know, it's not making it like CS 6.5 or anything. It's not anything too terrible. And when you have FXXY really struggling in the intro. And yeah, there was team by team as well. That was a pretty hefty drop there. Missed out a whole stream. US still looking good. Taquito is going to be the first drop for the US. They still have three FCs, though, to two on Israel's side. But this has been the story of the first two maps. Yeah. That's why still struggling. It's a lot of trades. You know, Taquito on the Hidden is pr it's probably the toughest mod on this map. It's it's I think the the Hidden, you know, it's relatively dense at, at 230 plus VPM and air it was only 9.1. Um so why with the break as well? I mean, he's kind of uh, unfortunately a little bit known for that sometimes. It, it happened in qualifiers and it happens here and there for him in matches where he'll just kind of find random breaks. Um but FX is why Mr. Potato breaking means that USA aren't going to be uncomfortable in this map at any at, at this point. Yeah, this is a massive score margin, unlike the others. This is now over 400k. SIP is going to be dropping, and this is looking like the first point for the United States. Still only halfway through, though, but Israel just can't seem to hold any combo aside from TYTY. Yeah, this map is so consistently challenging in the same way, right? It's all triples and quints with a couple of longer bursts thrown in that, like, it's a good predictor of how the rest of the map will go if somebody breaks you know, on those patterns early on, and that's kind of what Israel's doing. They, they broke early on, and they're continuing to have trouble in the same fashion. And yeah, this one's pretty well out of reach. This is what we expected from the United States. Like, this isn't even anything for them to celebrate. This is just what should have been happening this whole match, uh, ostensibly. Yeah, they're going to run away with this one into the final quarter. The lead cut in half, but Israel will have a chance to respond to their pick and maintain a 2 point lead if they can convert it and yeah, the question will become how do you respond to this pick if you're israel you know you got the break point you got the nomad one but what else kind of fits and i think i think the answer is probably going to be hard rock two if i had to guess before the map has even ended at what the next one is going to be but usa bringing this one home Honestly, like, it's a decent score. It's not an amazing score from USA. It's it's good enough to win by 1.4 million in this matchup, but I don't think they should be incredibly happy about that. They didn't have a single full combo. Now, definitely a rough one, but nevertheless, it's good enough to get the job done against Israel. It is two to one. Yeah, it, it, you know, it gets it gets the point on the board. It writes the ship for for the one seed here, but that's still not a performance that they should really be pleased with a against a team that was a little more comfortable or confident on tapping. That would not have been such a one sided affair. But we'll see what Israel does. Yeah, that is the question now. How will they respond? You mentioned they may try Hard Rock 2. Yeah, and the, the reasoning on that is just that Hard Rock 2 was tied for their best performance in qualifiers. Um, it was not a 6.5 in qualifiers, so it was a little different style of map, but if they do feel comfortable with that kind of precision, um, and it's a little bit more of a basic Hard, aim. Ooh, Hard, Hard Rock, Rock 1. one. Okay, well, still in the Hard Rock pool, I was half right. Yeah, I mean, hey, you got the mod right. <laughs> I don't know if that's really much to, to write home about. Hard Rock 1 is not your standard Hard Rock 1 that you would have come to expect from previous years, right? This one is not a, an, an aim map. This is pretty... It, it's a lot of tapping, and it's kind of tech-y. It has some tech elements to it with, those, with, the, uh, with the slider aim and the finger control. So that makes it really interesting coming off the back of how poorly that DT3... Or that Frexy to DT3. Free Mod 2 just went for Israel. Do see Painted Koala coming back in for FXY on the side of Israel. Boshi Man in the lobby for the United States. Rectagon as well. They wait two teammates. And a relatively short Hard Rock map here, just over two minutes in length. So yeah, again, we... you see Israel maybe trying to pick 
onto the side of the shorter maps because the Americans just have not been as consistent today. Well, that kind of goes both ways, though, right? I mean, the Nomad 1 was four minutes long, and it played to Israel's strength, so the USA wasn't being wasn't as consistent. So, I mean, that can go either way. This one is, is relatively consistent in difficulty. It's just quite short. I feel like this is kind of risky, but if you're comfortable with the pick as Israel, I mean, no reason not to go for it, I guess. You know, it's one of those where it's a team we're not as familiar with, and it's a, their, so their skill sets aren't ones that we're quite as familiar with. Mm -hmm. And at this point, you're in a situation that you probably, probably they didn't even expect to be in themselves, honestly. So if you're Israel at this point, you may just say, hey, this is the map we're the most comfortable on right now. We don't care how good the other team is. We just know this is what we can do right now. It's not a bad strategy. No, and, you know, USA had uh, notably... Hard Rock won in, in qualifiers, they four wayed it was a very different map, but they had Decaden in for that, which I guess is how his name has been pronoun is pronounced, so I will be corrected on that one. Um, and he is not here. So it forces the USA into a slightly less comfortable roster for a Hard Rock one. Obviously, Bashi Rektigan Nutami will be fine on this, but Fancy Lad coming in for this type of map is a little less common. So it's kind of a, 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 for, a, a fill player a little bit for the USA. And if Israel knows that that's what they're going into, that could also help explain why they're picking this. Well, here we go. Round number four. Israel's pick their second of the match. Fancy Lad, Bossy Man, Utami, and Erectagon for the Americans against Mr. Potato, TYTY, Sip, and Painted Koala for Israel. And this one comes at you pretty quick and really doesn't let up. A yep. lot of a lot of bursts and some slightly longer streams as well as a whole bunch of slider aim. Um, not of the super difficult slider aim variety, but enough that it makes you sit up and take notice. Oh, Rectagon and Utami now finding misses too early in the Americans. Fancy Lad is also down. That's three combos down for the Americans. But the act on the side of Israel is keeping the Americans in front. They're kind of struggling here, but they will start to take advantage once the combo builds. Yeah, that combo lead is already big enough for Israel to take the lead. I'm really shocked, honestly, at the United States' performance here. Fancy Lad breaking again, and meanwhile, it's still a three-way FC over on Israel's side. Their, their accuracy is really not helping them. This could be a huge lead if they had better act. But, oh! Oh, TY, TY in the slow section, that is big. They still have the advantage on FCs, but they're gonna have to go back to work building those combos because the Americans are rebuilding. TY, TY once again struggling in that slow section. As you said, these bursts, and it's a short map. We're already halfway through. Mr. Potato finding a miss, and now here come the Americans. Second half of the map. This section is like, really difficult with the way those bursts are mapped. It, they're on top of each other, those quints with the, in these patterns, which is kind of why you saw Mr. Potato and 2i2i -I both breaking. There goes Sip as well, so USA is just going to run away with this now. It was a really nice start for Israel on this pick, but just not able to maintain it into the last third of the map, it looks like, uh, unfortunately. Yeah, they kind of fell apart right at that halfway mark where you don't want to fall apart. Boshi Man, the FC, is going to go down for the Americans. Utami found a miss earlier as well, but one of them is traded by Mr. Potato, and there is no combo for Israel. Running out of time. Final eighth of the map. Yeah, USA is going to have this. Fancy Lad and Rectigon have enough combo that they'll be able to hold off Sip and Painted Koala pretty comfortably. Um, again, it's going to be... It, it's going to go down as a win for this pick for the United States. And as they say in golf, there's no pictures on the scorecard. But this is, again, the United States just not looking their best by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah, it certainly was a rough one, but they get the job done as Israel just kind of fell apart right at the halfway mark, and that is what did them in. They had a great start, but unfortunately, it's the finish that matters. 2-2. Two -two. Yep, 2-2 two -two and back to the United States pick. So we're back, you know, it's it's a 0-0, zero -zero, right? And now we just kind of have this best of five. Right. And I believe the United States was saying that they were pre-picking DT3. I don't know. I, I couldn't tell for sure if that was serious, but I would expect it to be after the way Free Mud 2 went. Uh, DT3 is another higher BPM, fairly stream-heavy, tapping-heavy pick. So I think that and, yep. leans into USA's strengths against Israel again. Yep, and there it is. Double time three for the United States looking to gain their first lead of the match. On the fifth map in the round of 32, words that I didn't think I'd ever be saying, and yet here we are. 
So we go back to the classics, Senya DT. That's a really uh, OG sort of DT artist. We used to see a lot of Senya maps, uh, DT1, DT2, DT3, any of them, depending on the song, can fit. Um, this one, one of the highest star rating maps in the pool, out other than, I think, Fremont 2 with Hard Rock is the only thing higher star rating, quirk of the new star rating system. And that indicates that it's very tapping heavy at 240 BPM. It's going to be, I think, another one where USA can just kind of flex their superior mechanical muscle. We'll see how it goes. Looks like US, looks like Swat of Taquito, Tommy, Rectigon, pretty standard tapping map lineup for the USA. Israel running Mr. Radio 2i2i SIP. It was FXXY as the fourth player on the free mod speed pick. So we'll see if he comes back in for this one, and he does. Also, we've been told that apparently TYTY's name is pronounced Tai Tai. Which, my Makes brain. <laughs> I, I mean, it kind of does. I, Osu players just have this habit of making their names either very strange things or unintuitive things. Uh, you need to change registration so when you register for this World Cup, you have to <laughs> you have to type your pronunciation. Oh my gosh, that would actually so be that would actually that. be really convenient. I mean, we, you know how like on NFL they do the player intros like yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. They, they say their name in the school they went to. We need, you know, tie tie 5180 Israel. <laughs> Israel. <laughs> <laughs> All right, in we go. USA looking for the first lead of the match. They better do it, because that would be uh, scary for them if they don't. Yep, looking for that first lead here on the Autobahn Remix Double Time 3. I'll take an early lead here. Off of accuracy. Taquito and Tommy coming away with SSs at the start, as well as FYX. Or FXY. That guy with those letters in his yes. name. That make it difficult to pronounce. Yeah, and no, uh, of course, he. Yeah. <laughs> there goes Mr. Mr. Potato. Potato. <laughs> yeah, the one that missed. Yeah. Uh, and there goes Tai Tai. Yep. All right, so, so we've oh. got Sip against four. And Not a good position for Israel. This is how we expected this match to actually go. This, this is a return to normalcy for USA. A, a four way full combo against one FC from the other team and a 400k lead at one third of the way. Like, this is expected performance. T1G happy to see some normalcy here. I mean... But, uh, you're absolutely right. This is what everybody was anticipating coming into this. We just got an insane round one from both teams on their first picks. The US now dominating here on double time, as most people kind of thought. Yeah, USA you know, kind of built up their speed a little bit this year, adding Sawada to the roster and bringing Rectigon uh, after his tournament ban expired. Um, Tito did find that first break, yes, but still pretty comfortable. Of course, Utami, a very solid speed player as well. You know, you lose Arison from last year, but bring in Sawada, which he's not Arison, but he can fill the shoes pretty confidently on most things. He's proven that here, 99.41 AC. FC. Into the final quarter, it is only a formality now. The United States up by over a million points. Will most definitely be taking this one away and they will have their first lead of the match at 3-2. And this is gonna be maybe a four mil score here, or at least close to it. Tito broke it, kind of an unfortunate point in the map, but it looks like they do make the four million mark. Rectigon with a late break, but Tommy brings things home with the SS as a player, on, as a, like with a pitcher on a perfect game. You don't talk about it until it's already been done. And he uh, accomplishes that feat. And USA looking a little bit more like themselves on that pick. 3-2 they lead. Israel now will have another pick. A chance to tie it up. Quite the performance out of Utami there. SS. We have not seen too many of those, oddly enough, this weekend. I think we had one in Indonesia, Finland, I want to say. I th I, there was an SS, I believe. It was Fumo, right? I 
think that sounds right. I was I about think, half awake watching that match. I, I think their monocle uh, from Singapore also popped off. I think he had an SS. But anyway, back to this match. Israel. Right. So they've got no mod 4, all of the hidden pool, and one double time, one hard rock, and two free mods. You have now to wonder, do they go hidden? I it just I, has not been picked. I don't think you pick hidden into the USA here. Um, qualifiers, they lost hidden 1 to USA by 1.5 million and hidden 2 by 1.8 million. So I'm going to say you don't pick hidden against the USA if you're Israel. Um, and it makes me kind of surprised no the USA four. didn't pick it themselves. Or or, and we're going to free mod 1. So it's the Alden free mod, which is the slightly uncomfortable aim free mod pick. This is kind of akin to, it's, it's a little more similar to the hidden one, right? Not like your comfy wide angle aim. It's got some linear jumps and such in it. I kind of would have rather seen maybe hard rock two than free mod one, but you know, it's a map you can hard rock pretty comfortably. So not the worst case scenario. Israel just didn't look great on the prior free mod that they that was picked though. So it's a little surprising to see them go back into that pool when they have players who maybe aren't, you know, like not a super comfortable mod roster. We'll have to wait and see, because they did not overmod at all um, on the previous free mod. Yeah, it was bare minimum one hidden, one hard rock versus USA. Obviously, all four players picking at least one mod and Utami going hidden hard rock. Now, this one, I suppose, maybe lends itself to just going one hidden, one hard rock more easily. I, I don't feel like that's necessarily true, though. So this is going to be an interesting one. I don't really know what to expect for the mods from Israel. USA could overmod again. You can go, or you can just go, you know, Takedo hidden, Recti on hard rock, and have a couple of no mods on it. So it's going to be Fancy Lad Takedo, Utami Rectagon against Mr. Potato, Tai Tai, Sip, and Pina Koala. Israel have only made one substitution for, I think, two maps. Bringing in FXY. Interesting to me that Galog played all 11 maps in qualifiers, and he has not played a single map today. He is here. He joined and left before the, the first map started. That's very strange to see something like that happen. But obviously the roster they're running, you know, has been keeping things pretty close for the most part, other than that last map. So let's see here. What do we get? Oh, as expected, okay. Oh, oh, whoa, okay. Utami's going oh. to Hidden Hard Rock again. Interesting. Yeah, so we've got a Hidden Hard Rock uh, on top of the requirements for the United States and just a single Hard Rock on top of the requirements for Israel. So it'll be a slight mod advantage for the United States, but if Utami struggles, that will put Israel up. Yeah, the, the overmod, as always, feels a little risky but it worked out the first time around for USA, so obviously not too, uh, not feeling too bad about keeping that up. Oh, very early <laughs> for Rectagon in those little bursts. Yeah, first 20 combo. We get into the map proper and you kind of can see these aim patterns, they're not wide angle, they're not linear, they're somewhere in between. And there are some of those like that back and forth linear jump you just saw. It's a lot of patterns kind of like that. So it never really lets you get super comfortable with this style of map. And honestly, I feel like that favors USA over over most teams because they typically are a, a roster that's very good at uncomfortable aim. And Pena Koala finding several misses and another one right now at the start. So Tai Tai also gonna be finding a miss. That is two FCs down. The Americans still rocking basically four, three and a half. Rekagon missed very early. Three and five sixths. Um, don't check my math, I have no idea. Yeah, Tai Tai and Pena Koala are just not having a good time. It, they're straight up having a rough go of things, unfortunately. Mr. Potato and Sip are keeping them alive. Rekagon is going to go down, so it'll slow things up for the United States, but I feel like now, especially given that Mr. Rekagon, it's really all on Utami, right? Because if Utami misses, that's going to be the most harmful thing for the Americans. But Tai Tai and Pina Koala continuously struggling is going to put this one out of reach. 
Yeah, it's it's really a tough ask to try to come back in a map when you have a player at 93 ac that's not been able to build up any combo and a player who's not super far ahead of him. It, I mean, it, it it's unfortunate because Mr. Potato and Sip are playing this very, very well, holding the double FC. But when you're against a triple FC on the other side, it's just like an insurmountable obstacle in front of you. Yeah, and they are starting to run out of time. They are going to need like a double or triple miss to come out from the Americans right now. We're getting to the final third of the map because that is over 500,000 points. They will not be able to flip it unless they get some misses. And I just don't, even with misses, it would have to be a complete meltdown from USA at this juncture. You know, Mr. Potato and Sip, as we've been saying, like keeping their hopes kind of alive until the point of no return. And I think, unfortunately for Israel, that point has been has yeah. been passed. And now it is gone. Mr. Potato with that miss is going to definitely seal it. So USA, uh, they actually just wanted to ruin everyone's pickums. They they completely just. I don't know. I don't want to say through because you never want to make that sort of a, you know, you never want to make that sort of baseless assumption. <laughs> but they had a really rough time on the first two maps and they've won four maps in a row now since then. Israel, uh, I don't know that this was necessarily the best pick considering how Tai Tai and Painted Koala end up doing. Though Painted Koala actually recovered okay, but with Tai Tai having as much trouble as he did, like if you don't have a four man roster for an early round map, it shouldn't really be on your radar for a pick. And against a team that pulls out a triple FC, it never really made much difference anyway. And it's going to be 4-2 United States. They will instantly pick Hidden 2. Yep. Well, what do we say, you know, before that last pick, right? The Hidden score discrepancy in qualifiers was massive between these two teams. USA, I think with their top two scores on Hidden 2 and qualifiers, probably could have uh, 2v4 Israel. Oh, uh oh, and, and then some. We've got a new player in Accelerator for Israel, stating he is here to carry. So, uh, guess what? Guess what? The only map Accelerator played in qualifiers was. Let me guess. Hidden. <laughs> I'm he take played a wild one, guess. <laughs> he played. Yeah, he played one of eleven maps in qualifiers. It was hidden too, and he was their top score on it. At and there's Galag. All right, and Thank we you. get Galag in. Let's go. All right. No, well, no, this is Israel's plan. They didn't pick him because they wanted the Americans to eventually pick it so they could get another break point. They've just activated their trap card. That's what's happening. You know, you are huffing some mad copium right now, my guy. <laughs> I am, <laughs> I am <laughs> here for it. I am here for it because, like, I would love for Israel to get another point, but I just don't really like their chances very much, unfortunately. <laughs> listen, man, listen. We, we didn't we didn't know what was going on in rounds one and two all right <laughs> it, it ain't over till it's over this is a spooky match uh so this hidden two is a very straightforward map it just happens to it just happens to be airy it's got you know some streams it's got some aim it's a it's a classic nissan airy hidden and i think honestly if there if it was you know if it was going to be any hidden two for Israel to have any sort of chance in, it might as well be this one, where the reading component isn't quite as high as it might be in a later round with tons of perfect stacks and overlaps and things like that. I think what gets me about this one for Israel more so than the map is the length. Oh, just over three minutes, nearly three and a half minutes. You have to be well versed in the mod to stand a chance here against the United States, but they have shocked us already twice this match. Do they have another ace up their sleeve? I wouldn't put it past them to be able to play this map at least to some degree, but what that degree is is going to be the question. You see, you know, Takedo, the hidden specialist, and you see Utami, who's great at reading, Bashi, who's partially on the team for this type of map. So USA's roster, pretty scary on this pick. Israel's going to be have to put up their absolute A game if they want to have a shot. But hey, they've done it twice, right? Why not a third? So far, everyone looking good. The US just leading off of accuracy alone at this point. Utami does drop, so combo advantage Israel. But that accuracy will be keeping the Americans in the lead for now. That combo advantage, though, is going to start to drag things. Israel in front. Quarter of the map gone. Tie tie. First miss for the Israelites. And that was just a straight miss aim too. I mean, it was just a little back and forth jump pattern. 
and he did I, he may have misread it and thus aimed wrong hard to say exactly but that was a really unfortunate way to break at that point in the map but it's still three fc's to three so i mean this and is still I, balanced look at these accuracies tai tai and boshi both seem to be struggling a little bit in terms of accuracy tai tai just more so than boshi so we may have to keep our eyes peeled for a miss halfway mark coming up accelerator goes down oh no <sighs> Missing in the slow section halfway through has been the downfall of Israel at least once. Uh, remember the back to that Hard Rock 1, oh. and it's a Tai Tai and Accelerate. Uh, you know, who was the one to break in the middle in the slow section on Hard Rock 1? It was Tai Tai, unfortunately. It's gonna happen to him again here. Those slow sections with Hidden Man, they just give you a false sense of security, and you lose track of that beat for a split second, you have missed. And this accelerator going down now. It looks like Israel, they put up such a good fight here in the first half. Galag still playing phenomenally as well as Mr. Potato. But with a quarter of the map left and that score deficit growing, Israel is going to need a miracle. They are going to need a complete meltdown from the United States. Yeah, it, it has to be a four-way reset for USA. That's about the only possible chance for Israel at this point. There's not a lot of time left. There's going to be running out of combo. And with Galog breaking one of their remaining two FCs, that's pretty much going to seal the deal for the Israelis, unfortunately. And Mr. Mr. Potato, Potato falls as well. That will do it. Israel, though, they came, they saw, they destroyed everyone's pickums. But the United States are going to come back with five unanswered and take this one away. Five to two, the final score. A very respectable performance from Israel today. Yeah, I am incredibly impressed by what we saw from Israel on those first couple of maps. Taking two points against the overwhelming tournament favorite number one seed four year in a row champion in the United States is no small order. And in and, the same fashion both times at the uh, last possible second, getting an incredible comeback. Israel able to hold consistency on the second half of those first two maps really something to cheer about. I'm sure it'll be a great moment for them to go back and relive. But the United States are your winners. They will move on to play the 17th seed Singapore in the round of 16 next week. Israel will play Japan in the loser's bracket. Uh, you feel for Israel, man, putting up that kind of show against the United States and being met with Japan in their first match in losers. And I just want to say real quick the way Singapore played today against Japan versus the way the United States played in those first few maps against Israel, USA's gotta, gotta step things up or they're gonna be in trouble earlier in the tournament than they've been in trouble in a long time. They are able to rally though from the two nothing deficit to get the five two win today. There are your winners on screen. Moving on to the round of 16. So coming up next, I believe is going to be Canada against Chile.